guys. So yesterday we went over how the turtle got its shell on the summative assessment. So today we are going to go over dugout canoe. Okay? So remind me, why do I read it for the first time? To just read it and to also figure out what kind of text it is. Is it informational? Is it fiction, non-fiction? What is it trying to teach me? What is its purpose? Then, I go back and I read a second time. And what do I read a second time for? For what? Main idea for what? Each paragraph, okay? All right, so looking at the passage today, Dugout canoes in North America. Before people from Spain and England came to America, there were no roads. Early Americans used the rivers to travel. Travel was very important for two reasons. First, people needed to trade with each other to get the goods that they needed to live. Second, different villages helped each other in times of war, sickness, or other kinds of trouble. The fastest way to send for help was by canoe. The early Americans traveled in several types of canoe, one of which was the dugout canoe. As the name suggests, a dugout canoe was made from hollowing out big tree trunks. The forest had many huge trees that were ideal for making canoes. Some of the trees were so large that the finished canoe would hold up to 40 people. Such a large canoe took many days to make, and everyone in the village helped work on it. The first step in making a dugout canoe was to choose a tree. The best trees were very straight and at least three feet thick. Once the tree was cut down, all branches and bumps were smoothed away. At this point, the canoe builders hollowed out the canoe. To make this process easier, the builders lit small fires on the wood that would be cut away. Once the wood was burned black, it was softer and easier to chip out. They put wet mud around the fire to control where it would burn next. To make sure the new canoe would float without tipping to one side, the builders were careful to make both sides of the canoe the same thickness. Once the dugout canoe was finished, all the people in the village would help to drag it down to the water. The new dugout canoe was an important part of village life. All right, so let's talk about what kind of text this is. What kind of text is this, Christopher? It is informational. Why is it informational? Okay. What are they, What is the author's purpose of this? Well, what did they write this for? What was their purpose in, in telling in, in writing this passage, Justin? To teach us about the dugout canoes. To teach us about the dugout canoes. It's okay. So now I'm going to start my second read. And in my second read, what am I going to do? I'm going to label my main idea of each paragraph. I'm going to look at each individual paragraph, and I'm going to look at the main idea for each paragraph. So let's look at number one. Before people from Spain and England came to North America, there were no roads. Early Americans used the rivers to travel. Travel was very important for two reasons. First, people needed to trade with each other to get the goods that they needed to live. Second, Different villages helped each other in times of war, sickness, or other kinds of trouble. The fastest way to send for help was by canoe. Okay, so what was the author's purpose? What was their reason for writing paragraph one? What does paragraph one add to this passage? Madison? About travel. Huh? About traveling. About traveling, okay and about the early Americans needing to travel. Huh? 
How did they travel? What is this about? What kind of travel is this about? Monster energy. All right, early America travel about, well, not just streams, by what? Rivers. Streams, rivers, all that. What is that? Water. All right, early Americans traveled by water. Okay? So that is my first paragraph. Let's look at second paragraph. The early Americans traveled in several types of canoes, one of which was the dugout canoe. As the name suggests, a dugout canoe was made from hollowing out big tree trunks. The forest had many huge trees that were ideal for making canoes. Some of the trees were so large that the finished canoe would hold up to 40 people. Such a large canoe took many days to make, and everyone in the village helped work on it. So, what is this second paragraph about? What was the author's purpose for creating this second paragraph, or including this second paragraph in this passage, Christopher? It's telling you about what the, what the was made out of. Okay. More specifically, it's telling me how they, they that they traveled by what? The early Americans traveled in several types of canoes, one of which was a dugout canoe. As the name suggests, a dugout canoe was made from hauling out big tree trunks. The forest had many huge trees. They were ideal for making canoes. Some of the trees were so large that they finished the canoe could hold up to 40 people. Such a large canoe took many days to make, and everyone in the village helped work on it. So what is this paragraph about? All right, Dory? Canoes, okay? It's telling me about canoes. It's telling me, um, it's not really talking, it is kind of talking about them, but it's kind of giving me um, like a script, uh, a who, what, when, where on the, the, the canoe, okay? So what we're gonna say is that paragraph two is about dugout, what are they? Okay, so that's what paragraph two is about. Okay, now let's look at paragraph three. The first step in making a dugout canoe was to choose a tree. The best trees were very straight and at least three feet thick. Once the tree was cut down, all branches and bumps were smoothed away. At this point, the canoe builders hollowed out the canoe. To make this process softer and easier to tip out, they put wet mud around the fire to control where it would burn next. To make sure the new canoe would float without tipping to one side, the builders were careful to make both sides of the canoe the same thickness. So what is, what is the purpose? What is the main purpose of paragraph three? What, what does paragraph three do? First step, in making a dugout canoe was to choose a tree. Then it says, once the tree was cut down, all branches and bumps were smoothed away. At this point, the canoe builders hollowed out the canoe. So what are they doing, Jolene? Steps to making a dugout canoe. How to make a dugout canoe. canoe was finished, all the people in the village would help to drag it down to the water. The new dugout canoe was an important part of village life. Okay? So what does this last paragraph bring to this passage, Aaliyah? Um, it's about how the canoe was finished. Okay, 
it does talk about it finished. It says once the canoe was finished, all the people of the village would help to drag it down to the water. The new dugout canoe was a very important part of village life. So, do what? It was important to who? The village. Okay. All right. Paragraph one, two, three, and four have for me. I'm going to start looking at my question. All right, number two said, or this one, the first question for this passage says, at this point, the canoe builders hollowed out the canoe. Which word is opposite in meaning of hollowed out? Okay. So what does it mean to hollow out? What does it mean to hollow out, Cole? Okay, to clear all the stuff out from the inside. Very good. So like if you've got a pumpkin and you're trying to hollow it out, you're digging the seeds and cleaning the inside of it out so that it's hollow. Emptying it out, okay. So if I know that it's emptying out, what would the opposite of hollowed out be? Would it be carved? No. What does carving do? Empty. Carving is part of the emptying process, so that's not going to be the opposite of hollowing out. Shape? No. no. Filled? Yes. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, I like it. Decorated? No. Oh, definitely not. So my answer is that field is the opposite of hollowed out because to hollow out means to empty it to take things out of it and then fill it of course means to put things into it yeah i missed that i saw it i didn't uh, see the opposite one. you didn't see the all caps opposite yeah i didn't saw that either okay so I didn't. what i would suggest grayson is when you're reading the question Read it closely and maybe even say, okay, this is opposite. It wants the opposite of hollowed out. Okay? So that way I know whatever I know hollowed out means, I know that I need to look at the opposite of that. Okay? All right, so number three. Before people from Spain and England came to America, there were no roads. Which idea does the sentence best support? All right, so we're looking for the idea that the sentence supports. Okay? So in other words, this is going to be a detail. And it's asking me, what is the main idea that this detail would go to? All right, so it was faster to travel by water than land. Yes. Yes. All right, so if I say, before people from Spain and England came to America, there were no roads. Would that support that it is faster to travel by water yes. than by land? Yes. What do we say? Maybe. Yes. All right, so we're going to give it a maybe. All right, people needed a way to travel long distances across the ocean. So before people from Spain and England came to North America, there were no roads. Does that support that people needed a way to travel long distances yeah. across the ocean? No. No, because no, it doesn't say anything about the ocean. I don't know that I would want to take a canoe across the ocean. Yeah. All right. So let's look at answer choice C. Spanish and English settlers decided there was no need to build roads. No. 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 Transportation changed after people arrived from Europe. No. No. Maybe. Not at all. No. Maybe. No. No, not maybe. No. no. So did transportation change after people arrived from Europe? No. 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 It's 
because it says up here, before people from Spain and Europe came to America, there were no roads. Early Americans used the river. So, maybe Spain, transportation changed after people arrived from Europe. All right, so we're getting a maybe. So we've got two maybes. In other words, now we've, we've narrowed it down to two. So let's look at what's going to be our best main idea that that's going to support. Wait a minute. Let's talk through it, okay? Because I've got some saying A and some saying D. So I need to have reasons as to why it's A and reasons as to why it's D. All right, so um, Cameron, what do you think? They would have to walk on the land all the way where they needed to go. If they were on the water, they could float so it would be faster. Okay, so it was faster to travel by water than land. Before people from Spain and England came to North America, there were no roads. Yes. Okay, yes. so let's look at this. Transportation changed after people arrived from Europe. Before people from Spain and England came to North America, there were no roads. No. Yes. No. But what does this talk about? Does this talk anything about roads? No. And does it talk anything about the people from England and Spain building roads? No. So my answer is going to be A. 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 Is that the only reason you are arguing that that's the right one? Yes. Well, no. Yes. That's All right, now, looking at question number four, what is the meaning of send as it is used in the last sentence of paragraph one? So let's go back to paragraph one, and it says, second, different villages help each other in times of war, sickness, or other kinds of trouble. The fastest way to send for help was by canoe. So is that going to be call? No. The fastest way to call for help was by the canoe? No. The fastest way to throw for no. help was by no. the canoe? No. The fastest way to dismiss for help no. was by the canoe? No. No. The fastest way to communicate yes. for help was by the canoe. So the answer is D. Um, Should paragraph three include to help the reader understand how dugout canoes were made? All right, so we're going back to paragraph three, and we need to know what information in, could be included to that to tell me how canoes, dugout canoes, are made. Okay, so let's go back to paragraph three. Paragraph three was about how to make a dugout canoe. Yep. It gave me the first step in making the canoe was um, to choose a tree. tree. The best trees were very straight and at least three feet thick. Once the tree was cut down, all branches and bumps were smoothed away. At this point, the canoe builders hollowed out the canoe. To make this process easier, the builders lit small fires on the wood that would be cut away. Once the wood was burned black, it was softer and easier to chip out. They put wet mud around the fire to control where it would burn next. To make sure the new canoe would float without tipping to one side, the builders were careful to make both sides of the canoe the same thickness. So if I said which type of tree they used, would that be important information to include in paragraph three? No. They were just looking for a tall, straight tree. What kinds of tools were needed? No. Maybe. 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 Where were the first dugout?
what Penny's made? No. I don't think that, that would t give us any information I mean, to include how they were made. made. Why do trees, uh, why are trees the best material to use for canoes? Maybe. I don't, I don't think that's going to tell me how dug out canoes are made. So what information would help me to understand a little bit better? The tools that they use. Did, did it say anything about the tools that they use? No. All right, number six. What is the main idea of paragraph three? Canoe makers burn the wood to make it easier to chip out. Is that the main idea? No. No. Making a canoe included a series of several different steps. Maybe. I like the maybe. Most of the people in the village were needed to make a canoe. No. no. That's not the main idea. That's just a supporting detail. <laughs> Dugout canoes were made from tree trunks that were cut down. No. All right, so my answer is B. 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 All right, number seven. Which inference is best supported by the passage? Maybe. Building a dugout canoe was an important project for the entire village. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, because it does say that. Dugout canoes were the most useful type of canoe for early Americans. No, no, no. no. But it, where it's, not say, it's not about what it says, it's what you can Infer. Infer means what I think. Okay? Or what you guess based on what you've read. Alright? So, dugout canoes are the most useful type of canoe for early Americans. What do I do with that? What do you think?
So, A says, why early Americans needed canoes? Maybe. Maybe. Different kinds of canoes? No. no. How to use a dugout canoe? No. How early Americans got together? No. So my answer is A. A. Do you see how by doing this, that question was easy to answer? That's all we had to do, guys, was just go and do that, like, with each paragraph, find the main idea and what it was talking about, and that made these questions so much easier to answer. All right, so that is um, our passage on dugout canoes. And we are going to take a little break, and then we are going to come back and look at the rest.